Welcome to a new episode in our video series Demystifying 5G. In recent announcements, Carrier mentioned that they are about to launch their 5G and R networks. And to do so, it is of course required to uh, do an assessment while these uh, networks are deployed, uh, do a network optimization after that. And for that, of course, Roland Schwartz has solutions. Uh, I brought you here an example. It's our TSME 6 uh, ultra compact uh, network scanner, a very sensitive receiver uh, that can be used to assess network performance. I'm using an SMW200A vector signal generator to emulate the base station part. Uh, but before we come to this demo, I would like to discuss one thing with you, and that is how a 5G device would actually access the 5G network. If you're following this channel, we had talked a lot about uh, standalone, non-standalone mode. The initial deployment will be non-standalone mode. That means we're using an LTE anchor uh, for control and signaling information exchange with the device. And that is actually very essential um, during the entire access process that the device is following. So let's deep dive into that. And then later on, we take a look how we're going to use this uh, information in order to use the scanner to access network performance and coverage. Uh, but as I said before, some more details on the technology side. So again, I would like to talk about how does a mobile network, uh, mobile access the 5G in our network. We start with the process that while the mobile uh, is uh, in LTE coverage, you see here the master E node B uh, providing uh, the LTE signals. There will be an update with release 15 um, to the system information block type two. As you can see here, I uh, copied that from the specification. There will be a new element uh, within that is called PLMN Info R15, which could be enabled. And that is the simple indication to a device that this network or this particular cell is ENDC capable, which means EUTRA and R dual connectivity. Uh, in that sense, which means that my mobile can, if it is 5G capable, as we assume here in this example, can access the LTE site and then in a dual connectivity uh, fashion also access 5G. So the cell is broadcasting this information as we see here. Typical LTE device would simply ignore that information, a 5G and our device would of course uh, know now that is in a coverage area where 5G is possible. And what that means is that during uh, the LTE access procedure with the attached request from the device uh, submitting its uh, network capability towards the network, it will set a specific bit in indicating towards the network, hey, I'm 5G capable too, I can do dual connectivity uh, with LTE and NR. So basically the mobile indicates to the network it's supporting non-standalone mode as well. So you see here on that uh, right hand side all these uh, layer free informations that will be uh, accessed and in a very much next step the, more, uh, the network now says like okay there is a device that is 5G and R capable, let's see which type of frequencies and so forth it supports for 5G and R. So over the established LTE connection it will send over the another RRC message, radio resource control message, the UE capability inquiry. There's uh, certain uh, request types possible, as you can see here. EUTRA stands for LTE. Of course, the network, since uh, this is a LTE base station, would also like to know the LTE capabilities of the device. But then it will also set it to NR to understand what kind of NR capabilities this device has. And of course, the mobile, like we see here on the slide, will respond with its UE capability information uh, in the uplink. And I show you here uh, these messages. And as you can see, with release 15, there is a EUTRA capability version 15.10. Um, and as you can see here, highlighted in blue, certain information will be delivered by the device. For instance, and most importantly here, uh, the IRAT uh, parameters, which means nothing else than the mobile will indicate which 5G and R frequency bands it is supporting. This is a very essential information for the network because the network knows what kind of 5G uh, uh, frequencies it's supporting. Is that either sub 6 gigahertz, is that millimeter wave, and now it's correlating that information from the device if it can actually uh, connect the device also to 5G and R. 
So how is that going to happen? Well, it's uh, not happen happening immediately. Before that, the device has to do its due diligence, which means nothing else than uh, report to the network how it sees 5G and our signals. Let's assume it's supporting those frequency ranges. So what you basically see here is over the established LTE connection, a new measurement object, measurement object and R, will be signaled to the device. And within that object, Basically, the network instructs the device to take signal quality measurements on surrounding 5G and R signals. So as you can see, that has nothing to do if it is sub-6 or millimeter wave. Of course, the network knows that and uh, knows by now that the device supports either just sub-6 or millimeter wave frequencies. So for each of frequency that is there, coming from a so-called secondary G node B, that is the 5G, uh, base station, uh, a measurement object will be sent and it has certain information, as you can see here, highlighted in the slide. So, I set signal quality measurements. Where is the device supposed to take the signal quality measurement on the so-called uh, synchronization signal blocks? So the question is be, where in the signal are these uh, blocks transmitted, um, how often they are transmitted, and so forth, and that's something that we will take a look at now. So first of all, the fundamentals of the synchronization signal blocks as they are uh, uh, new. If you are uh, familiar with LTE, you will see here familiar uh, signal names, uh, primary and secondary synchronization signal as in LTE will provide the physical cell identity. The physical cell identities have been doubled in 5GNR from uh, 504 in LTE to 1008 in 5GNR to support high density uh, network deployment scenarios, so that needs to be reflected with the primary and secondary synchronization signal. And uh, a synchron uh, synchronization signal blocks, as shown here in the graph, is also uh, broadcasting the physical broadcast channel that's carrying the master information block. And if we look here at the graph in detail, we see, <coughs> by a definition, uh, uh, SSB is occupying 20 resource blocks. A resource block still has 12 subcarriers, like in LTE, so in total we're talking about 240 subcarriers. But now with uh, uh, 5GNR supporting different numerologies to access different frequency bands, um, uh, this uh, synchronization signal blocks can occupy different bandwidths. It depends on the deployment frequency range. So if it's uh, um, um, uh, sub 6 gigahertz, the synchronization signal block can be either using 50 or 30 kilohertz. Is it uh, above 6 gigahertz, so millimeter wave frequencies, it could be 120 or 200. 40 kilohertz as an example, and of course with that uh, the bandwidth differs. So the PBCH, as I said, carries the master information block. Uh, some information here around that. It's still QPSK modulated. It's using polar code, which is a new uh, channel coding format that's being introduced with 5GNR. And most importantly, as you can see here, the demodulation reference signals that are now embedded since we occupy a, a wider bandwidth uh, than what a PBCH would occupy in LTE. Uh, these demodulation reference signals are necessary and as you can see here they are cell specific since their initialization sequence is dependent on the physical cell ID which again comes with the PSS and SSS. So like I said these synchronization signal blocks uh, are the flexibility is given with uh, uh, 5GNR they can be basically signaled anywhere in the signal uh, bandwidth that flexibility is given. In LTE, the synchronization signals were always centered around the carrier frequency. Now with, SS, uh, with the SSB concept in 5GNR, they could be anywhere in the signal. So what the measurement object over the LTE connection needs to do is basically signaling exact frequency position of these synchronization signal blocks. And that's what we basically see here. So within the measurement object, we will have what is called NR, ARFCN, NR, new radio of course, ARFCN stands for Absolute Radio Frequency Channel Number. Uh, we should be familiar with that from the LTE days, but basically what is it? We have the SSBs uh, uh, or a synchronization signal block, like I mentioned earlier, occupies 20 resource blocks. What is this particular frequency that's being signaled? Well, it's subcarrier zero in a resource block as shown here on the graph and so with that information the mobile knows exactly where to tune its receiver to to take these signal quality measurements. The signal quality measurements are basically based on the secondary synchronization signal and like uh, if you're familiar with LTE we're still measuring things like RSRP, RSRQ and SINR 
but on the secondary synchronization signal within the uh, synchronization signal blocks. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, frequency uh, positioning is uh, very important, could be anywhere. So if we would now follow the uh, uh, frequency raster in 5G and R, there would be a long time that the mobile has to uh, uh, sweep these frequencies. So for that purpose, if we're talking then a full initial only 5G deployment, which we call standalone, where we don't use the LTE anchor, that's later coming on, the standard has uh, defined the global uh, synchronization channel number, as you can see here, for the different frequency ranges. And what that basically is, it's not using that uh, high or uh, low granularity that we have here. We're tuning uh, our uh, receiver in the mobile to different frequency sets, as I'm showing here on the graph, where we don't follow the uh, carrier raster and the uh, uh, fine granularity. We have a much wider granularity with these global synchronization channel numbers. But again, this is something for standalone mode and not for the initial 5G and R deployment that we will see here coming uh, within the next months and year. Okay, so the last thing that I need to mention is then of course um, 5G and R can be deployed at different frequency ranges than the actual LTE carrier. So what the mobile has to do is of course tune its uh, receiver to those frequencies. Uh, for that we need a, a measurement window and also that information is provided by the measurement object NR. And I show you in here a specific example how is something like that can be configured. You see here basically uh, the definition of that measurement window uh, based on the timing information on the LTE side. We know the system frame number. My mobile is fully attached and connected to LTE, as, as I mentioned in the beginning. So you see here at which radio frames uh, the mobile would be allowed to tune its receiver away from the LTE uh, uh, connection to measure these signals. And that is, of course, an inf important information that is also provided by this instruction sent over the LTE connection. As you can see, our mobile hasn't done anything yet uh, on the 5G side, except being getting instructions what to do and what to measure on these uh, uh, 5G cells that it's potentially surrounded by. Uh, it takes these quality measurements, builds a measurement report, and sends this uh, one then, of course, uh, back to the network. So this is shown here on the slide, basically, as a quick summary based on these measurement information, based on the uh, identified cells uh, by the mobile, which are given over the LTE connection towards the network. A reconfiguration is done, and that reconfiguration procedure basically provides all necessary information to the device so that it can, can perform a random access procedure towards the 5G uh, radio access network. So basically, what we can summarize on is no LTE connection, no 5G connection. It's as simple as that. Um, that's basically now what we can use also to do uh, uh, perform coverage measurements because we can use a receiver like shown here, the TCME6, to also access uh, the synchronization signal blocks, measure RSRP, RSRQ, and SINR. But this is something that I want to show you in one of the next videos in our video series, Demystifying 5G.